Section 1 of Aesop's Fables, a new translation, written by Aesop, translated by V. S. Vernon Jones. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This section has been read by Roslyn Carlyle. The Fox and the Grapes a hungry fox saw some fine bunches of grapes hanging from a vine that was trained along a high trellis, and did his best to reach them by jumping as high as he could into the air. But it was all in vain, for they were just out of reach. So he gave up trying, and walked away with an air of dignity and unconcern, remarking, Oh, I thought those grapes were ripe, but I see now they are quite sour. THE GOOSE THAT LAID THE GOLDEN EGGS A man and his wife had the good fortune to possess a goose which laid a golden egg every day. Lucky though they were, they soon began to think they were not getting rich fast enough, and, imagining the bird must be made of gold inside, they decided to kill it, in order to secure the whole store of precious metal at once. But, when they cut it open, they found it was just like any other goose. Thus, they neither got rich all at once, as they had hoped, nor enjoyed any longer the daily addition to their wealth. The moral of this story is, much wants more, and loses all. The Cat and the Mice There was once a house that was overrun with mice. A cat heard of this and said to herself, that's the place for me and off she went and took up her quarters in the house and caught the mice one by one and ate them at last the mice could stand it no longer and they determined to take to their holes and stay there that's awkward said the cat to herself the only thing to do is coax them out by a trick so she considered a while and then climbed up the wall and let herself hang down by her hind legs from a peg and pretended to be dead. By and by, a mouse peeped out and saw the cat hanging there. Aha! it cried. You're very clever, madam, no doubt, but you may turn yourself into a bag of meal hanging there if you like, yet you won't catch us coming anywhere near you. And the moral of this story is, if you are wise, you won't be deceived by the innocent airs of those whom you have once found to be dangerous. THE MISCHIEVOUS DOG There was once a dog who used to snap at people and bite them without any provocation, and who was a great nuisance to everyone who came to his master's house. So his master fastened a bell round his neck to warn people of his presence. The dog was very proud of the bell and strutted about, tinkling it with immense satisfaction. But an old dog came up to him and said, the fewer airs you give yourself, the better, my friend. You don't think, do you, that your bell was given you as a reward of merit? On the contrary, it's a badge of disgrace. And the moral of this story is, notoriety is often mistaken for fame. The Charcoal Burner and the Fuller there was once a charcoal burner who lived and worked by himself. A fuller, however, happened to come and settle in the same neighbourhood, and the charcoal burner, having made his acquaintance and finding he was an agreeable sort of fellow, asked him if he would come and share his house. We shall get to know one another better that way, he said, and beside, our household expenses will be diminished. The fuller thanked him, but replied, I couldn't think of it, sir, why everything I take such pains to whiten would be blackened in no time by your charcoal. The Mice in Council Once upon a time all the mice met together in council and discussed the best means of securing themselves against the attacks of the cat. After several suggestions had been debated, a mouse of some standing and experience got up and said, I think I have hit upon a plan which will ensure our safety in the future. 
provided you approve and carry it out, it is that we should fasten a bell around the neck of our enemy, the cat, which will by its tinkling warn us of her approach. This proposal was warmly applauded, and it had been already decided to adopt it when an old mouse got upon his feet and said, I agree with you all that the plan before us is an admirable one, but may I ask who is going to bell the cat? The Bat and the Weasels A bat fell to the ground and was caught by a weasel and was just going to be killed and eaten when it begged to be let go. The weasel said he couldn't do that because he was an enemy of all birds on principle. Oh, but, said the bat, I'm not a bird at all. I'm a mouse. So you are, said the weasel. Now I come to look at you. And he let it go. Some time after this, the bat was caught in just the same way by another weasel, and, as before, begged for its life. No, said the weasel, I never let a mouse go by any chance. But I'm not a mouse, said the bat, I'm a bird. Hm. Why, so you are, said the weasel, and he, too, let the bat go. The moral of this story is, look and see which way the wind blows before you commit yourself. The Dog and the Sow A dog and a sow were arguing, and each claimed that its own young ones were finer than those of any other animal. Well, said the sow at last, mine can see, at any rate, when they come into the world. But yours are born blind. The Fox and the Crow a crow was sitting on a branch of a tree with a piece of cheese in her beak, when a fox observed her and set his wits to work to discover some way of getting the cheese. Coming and standing under the tree, he looked up and said, What a noble bird I see above me! Her beauty is without equal, the hue of her plumage exquisite. If only her voice is as sweet as her looks are fair, she ought without doubt doubt to be queen of the birds. The crow was usually flattered by this, and just to show the fox that she could sing, she gave out a loud caw. Down came the cheese, of course, and the fox, snatching it up, said, You have a voice, madam, I see. What you want is wits. The Horse and the Groom there was once a groom who used to spend long hours clipping and combing the horse of which he had charge, but who daily stole a portion of his allowance of oats and sold it for his own profit. The horse gradually got into worse and worse condition and at last cried to the groom, oh, If you really want me to look sleek and well, you must comb me less and feed me more. THE WOLF AND THE LAMB A wolf came upon a lamb straying from the flock, and felt some compunction about taking the life of so helpless a creature without some plausible excuse. So he cast about for a grievance, and said at last, Last year, Sarah, you grossly insulted me. That is impossible, sir, bleated the lamb, for I wasn't born then. Well, retorted the wolf, you feed in my pastures. That cannot be, replied the lamb, for I have never yet tasted grass. You drink from my spring, then, continued the wolf. Indeed, sir, said the poor lamb, I have never yet drunk anything but my mother's milk. Well, anyhow, said the wolf, I am not going without my dinner. And he sprang upon the lamb and devoured it, without more ado. THE PEACOCK AND THE CRANE A peacock taunted a crane with the dullness of her plumage. Look at my brilliant colours, said she, and see how much finer they are than your poor feathers. I'm not denying, replied the crane, that yours are far gayer than mine, but when it comes to flying, 
I can soar into the clouds, whereas you are confined to the earth, like any dunghill cock. The Cat and the Birds A cat heard that the birds in an aviary were ailing, so he got himself dressed up as a doctor, and, taking with him a set of instruments proper to his profession, presented himself at the door, and inquired after the health of the birds. We shall do very well, they replied without letting him in, when we've seen the last of you. And the moral of this story is, a villain may disguise himself, but he will not deceive the wise. The Spendthrift and the Swallow a spendthrift who had wasted his fortune and had nothing left but the clothes in which he stood saw a swallow one fine day in early spring. Thinking that summer had come, and that he could do now without his coat, he went and sold it for what it would fetch. A change, however, took place in the weather, and there came a sharp frost which killed the unfortunate swallow. When the spendthrift saw its dead body, he cried, Miserable bird, thanks to you I'm perishing of cold myself. The moral of this story being, one swallow does not make summer. The Old Woman and the Doctor An old woman became almost totally blind from a disease of the eyes, and, after consulting a doctor, made an agreement with him, in the presence of witnesses, that she should pay him a high fee if he cured her, while, if he failed, he was to receive nothing. The doctor accordingly prescribed a course of treatment, and every time he paid her visit, he took away with him some article out of the house, until at last, when he visited her for the last time, and the cure was complete, there was nothing left. When the old woman saw that the house was empty, she refused to pay him his fee and after repeated refusals on her part, he sued her before the magistrates for payment of her debt. On being brought into court, she was ready with her defence. The claimant, says she, has stated the facts about her agreement correctly. I undertook to pay him a fee if he cured me, and he, on his part, promised to charge nothing if he failed. Now, he says I'm cured, but I say that I am blinder than ever, and I can prove what I say. When my eyes were bad, I could at any rate see well enough to be aware that my house contained a certain amount of furniture and other things, but now, when according to him I am cured, I am entirely unable to see anything there at all. The Moon and Her Mother the moon once begged her mother to make her a gown. How can I? replied she. There is no fitting your figure. At one time you're a new moon, and at another you're a full moon, and between whiles you're neither one nor the other. End of section one.